obviously know very well what you know the grind of coaching man mm -hmm. it's a serious thing and yeah. again i don't know if anything that you're talking about in this book plays into what the grind of coaching right. could be or because people are like yeah. okay he left three years 45 million as long you know and you could see he really loved all the people he said goodbye yeah. to because i think he just stopped talking two seconds ago look, from his press right, conference right. i think it's still going so, on uh, so it, i said it, to him i said hey hey bro your opening thing went on for an hour. And first of all, you screwed this thing up. You want to do, and we talked right before end. Yeah. And he's like, I want to do this Ted Lasso thing. And I was like, yeah, and just, and then he comes on. And he's like, you know, I love Netflix and Ted Lasso. I said, it's not even on a Netflix, bro. It's on Apple. It's like, right. what are you doing? Well, it's his <laughs> movies on, his <laughs> right. movies yeah, on Netflix. Goes. So, you know. So, no, Sean and I, man, we, we started talking about this about three months ago. And he kept going back and forth, back and forth. If you watch me doing my, during my coaching carousel on you know, week 18 of, right. of Fox NFL Sunday, I said after, I think, who's out, I said, and by the way, you'll probably have another opening or so from, you know, a coach that could step away that, because um, it's been a, a tough year or two with COVID, and that's what I was talking about. And he was gonna, he went into, originally we were going to break it that Tuesday, mm -hmm. right after, and I was like, he said, but I want, you know, talk to Mrs. Benson, well, Mrs. Benson told him, hey, why don't you take a few days off and, and really think about it. Mm -hmm. So Sean said, you know, I'm not going to do it yet. Ms. Benson wants me to take a couple days off. Well, a couple days turned into two weeks at Cabo. And then when he came back, it was better like, hey, you, this is your story. This is your deal. You know, however you want it to right. come out, which it should be. If a guy says to me, you know, at first he's like, yeah, you should, I'll, let you, I'll let you break it at mm -hmm. first. But then if he says, you know what, I want to do this, that's their prerogative, you know, to do that. Um, but we were talking, and, and the thing, too, is I didn't want to go full in on it also because he did kept changing his mind. Yeah, what I mean, like you might have it. said, yeah. you know, after all that two weeks yep. in Cabo, but I can only imagine mm. he, uh, w w just today, just like as I said yesterday, just yeah. today, he's not, has to talk this, about I think the, I spoke to him this morning. Yeah, he's have to worry about the combine or what's going on at the Senior Bowl. I spoke to him this morning or last night. Either one, I was giving him, you know, crap about his one hour his, oh, his yeah, preamble opening, yeah his preamble that became an amble yeah. <laughs> a post an amble, amble, an amble it was an everything amble, an amble, yeah. <laughs> i know yeah. so so he is you you think he is definitely out for 2022 because yeah. you know a lot of people yeah. think that he's just trying to yeah hustle you know, another yeah but even so if that's the case you know he's not going to retire for three days and get traded to another team i don't think so no i right. think he but right. I, I think it's just hard for here's the thing again mvp it's a charity for transition. Yes. So I think he wants to step away, but at the same time, there's probably a fear like, okay, well, I've never not been on a team. I've never not been part. I mean, this is going back, right? right? High school, college, yeah. NFL. He's never not been in a locker room. That's going to be weird. Some of that, too, it kind of jolts you a little bit. So he's like, oh, okay, well, I think I could do this. But I'm not sure I could not be around my locker room. Well, every coach I've ever worked with, former coach I've ever worked with on television still has I mean you never get yeah. that com competition wanting to talk to the refs even if you're yeah. you know on the sideline or yeah uh, of, of a broadcast you know like they, they the and, and and he even said he thinks he'll, he'll get back into coaching at some point yeah, I mean he also mentioned TV he mentioned a lot of stuff yeah. he's and always his, I mean I think he's you know mentioned me you know a year or two he said, but I don't know. They go on long. I don't know. I don't know how much I'm going to love this or not love this. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think, too, for a lot of coaches, you know, the losses are so hard on them and their families. And when it gets to the point where you can't enjoy the wins anymore, that's when you got to kind of move it along. No right? question. And, it, and all those guys who, you know, Jimmy Johnson will tell you the same thing. And, you know, I, I haven't talked to Bill Cowher, but I'm assuming they all go through the same thing. Jim Mora Sr. told yep. me that the loss, the, the the sting of the losses and the depression of the losses mm -hmm. lasted so long yeah. and was so more more intense yeah. than the excitement over the wins. But when the wins you know? stop being exciting, that's when it's time to exhale and take that, a breath. That, that's true. Right? And that's yeah. what happens to a lot of these guys. The losses beat them down so much sometimes. Happened to Madden. They, happened yeah, to yeah, Vermeil. Yeah, they you know? can't I mean, enjoy the wins anymore. Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank all you wonderful people, as always, for being here and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. And let me start this out because I want to do something here real quick because 
We have all the channel members out there. Shout out to you channel members. The reason why we've been able to do so many things is because of great people like Gina Thorne, Angelica Baron, Roland's Review, Troy Daniels, Lola, all of you, Sugar Daddy and things. Um, if you have gone to the Thrive site, you know, with you on the community tab and hit that link in there and gone through, you've been actually doing Sheila Neal and Cowboys Up North and uh, all you great fans then you've filled out like the whole little profile. So now I know your birthday. Now, Troy Daniels, for some reason, yours didn't come up on the Thrive site, but you let me know that you got the the uh, the original first piece to ever leave my workshop. You got a piece before my parents even got a piece. And he got it today, and he said that today is Troy Daniels' birthday. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. wait, wait. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Hold it. Mic check. Mic sound nice check one. My mic sound nice check two. My mic sound nice check three. Are, Are you, you ready? ready? So happy birthday to you, Troy Daniels. And also, also, wait, 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 wait. Um, Belco, I don't know if the end is silent or not. Nidi, Nidi is also his birthday. He was born in 1985. He's a young man. I had already graduated high school in 1985. I was at JMU someplace getting drunk in 1985. Shout out to you guys. Happy birthday, Troy. I hope you're having a great birthday and everything else. Still mad about you originally trying to take Dak from me, but but we're still good. We're still good. Anyway, here we sit watching other teams and literally feeling like we are just terrible and filthy. I don't know why you think that you, you know, coming in here, first of all, why can't I troll the Washington football team? You know, first thing. I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. They need to call the stadium Cowboys East because we own the motherfucker. That's how I control them. I, that's how I control them. DC stands for Dallas Cowboys. That's right. DC stands for <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. And quite frankly, filthy. We kicked your ass, and I don't want to hear this stuff. Oh, well, it was a different team week three. You know what? It was a team that got down and got beat down. And I don't want to hear about we rested. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear that shit because you know what? It went down there as two of the 12 wins that we had. So if you don't like it, take your mother humping ass out of here. Just take it out. Take it out. Don't make me use my finger here on the mouse. To start timing some mother humpers out. And I know you, I know what y'all were doing yesterday. You were crying to Philly 500. Philly, he blocking people. He put me on timeout. But you know what I say about that? I knew it. Here and so before we start this video, I got to get this mother humping thing out of the way. Okay? Let's get How do you think crying to my son is going to help your stupid ass out? See, if you don't want to be timed out, then don't come in here being a jackass. You know what? Because, you know, I'm old school. I'm old school. Just like my mom used to say, boy, go out there and get a twitch. And you, I'm, I'm telling you. See, this is when you know. Because this shit, shh, you better not mess up. Because mama would say, go out there and get me a switch. And you better not come in here with a little flimsy ass twig because if she has to go out there and get that thing, she's going to get one that's going to wear your ass out. You mother humpers are too damn soft. So don't come in here testing me. I'll, I'll go out there and I'll get that switching right on your ass, okay? Let me say hello to Gina C. What's up? Damn, Gina. Gina Thorne. What's up, Gina Thorne? Oh, Sheila. What's up, Sheila Neal? Alicia. Alicia Morgan, what's up? How you doing? I know Roland's reviews here. What's up, Roland? I, I, I must have more ladies up in here than any other champ I, I think i do 
get a grown man, a sugar daddy, it better be green. Look, by definition, a switch has to be green because otherwise you got a twig and it just snaps. You're in trouble. There's Angelica Baron. What's up, Angelica? Okay, Angelica, you had a question there when I first came on. And instead of me answering it, because, you know, when you go to a restaurant and you ask the waiter, well, is it good? He's not going to tell you, no, the shit's rotten, man. You don't want to eat that stuff. It's rancid. This mother humper don't know how to cook anything. Go someplace else. and He ain't going to say that. He going to lie to you. Oh, it's really good. It's one of my favorites, right? So instead of me answering whether or not the uh, shrimp fried rice with cauliflower rice was any good, I'm going to ask him. Because at first I said, would you like to get some? He was like, nah, that's all right. But he had a bowl. So, Michael, I want your, listen, don't sugarcoat it. Don't tell me what you want, I want, want, want to hear. You tell me how was the shrimp fried rice without rice cauliflower instead. Once I put a little hot sauce on it, it was delicious. Oh, you had, oh so it, it wouldn't have been good without the hot sauce. No, it probably would have been, but I like a little heat with my Chinese, with my Chinese food. Okay, I don't know if that helps you or not. He he said with hot sauce like, it was good. I like spicy but see, food though, look, so that's different though than other people because not everybody likes spicy food. I love spicy food. Most people could eat a rat if you got ketchup and hot sauce too. So I ain't uh, no, much. no, I, I, I can't. Eat, I can't eat a rat with no. Okay, all right, all right. Well, well, you, well, 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 unless Jet D's cooking it, cooking it up. All right, hey, Jet, you got a challenge here. But I'm not going to eat. Not oh, gonna eat. see. <laughs> Miss Hot Sauce, Lola. What's up, Lola? Ooh, and Lola came in, and she came in guns blazing. Filthy 500, shut the fuck up. Damn. Okay, and I don't think Oh, uh, we all see. See, I understand that. See, I, I got it now. I got it. I, I, it, it. I just had an epiphany. I understand now why we get all these trolls up in here now from all these other teams. They're coming for the ladies. They think that they have a shot. They're coming in. They're coming in here and they're trying to act like they the man, you know. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, filthy uh, East Side Herald, you coming in here and trying to diss me, diss the Cowboys. It ain't going to get you no play here. It, it just ain't going to get you no play. Mark, do I want Mike to have kids? Say what? You mean my little baby? Listen, I got enough babies running around here. I got Philly 500. I got Rio. I got Cop Pizza. I don't need no more babies. What are you kidding me? I need, I need my own place. I think, yeah, I, I got babies. Place. Before I even think about that, I need my own place. Babies? First one, are you kidding me? Place. All right. <laughs> let's, let's get on to it. How you doing today, Mike? You're, I, see, you're, you're drinking your liquid death. I, I don't know that I would ever buy water that's called liquid but, death. But, Honestly, I thought it was sparkling water. But Does it taste like anything? Don't tell me it's just water that it, says well, liquid well, death. Actually, it's alkaline water. Is what it really is. Shit, people spend my yeah. I, I, my, back. back in my day, the only water we bought was the water coming to the house to the faucet, and that wasn't all. We we used to have a well at Grandma's house, so we didn't even buy water. Now you buying a can, little, little tw sixteen ounces of water. It hey, don't make no damn sense. Mark, I thought you said Jacksonville hard left. Actually, he was the leading candidate. They said it was intimate, and they decided, nope, they, they screwed him. They screwed him. Okay. All right, let's get on to it. Let's get on and start dealing with this shit with the Cowboys, man. We suck. We are 12-5 and five, sitting at home on the couch with teams like the Jets, the Giants, and everybody else. In, in fact, well, what? Other teams. There's 30, what, there's 30 other teams sitting on the couch, and we got our ass sitting there with them as well. And it disgusts me because I think about now how many doormat teams have now been to the Super Bowl since we've been there. I know the Bengals. The Bengals. Have been. And the 49ers twice. Tampa Bay. Summer. Twice. The Eagles twice, the Giants twice, Carolina twice, don't, the Cardinals. Don't don't even think about how many times New England went to the Super Bowl. Maybe I think not eight or maybe yeah. Actually, New England before they, they were a doormat too. Uh, they they were they were. <laughs> yeah, 
I, I mean, even Belichick. even the Green Bay Packers hadn't been back since the '60s. They 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 went. They went. They went twice. I mean, they didn't they go twice? Thank God the Lions didn't go or Washington. At least we got something to hang our hat on. I'm you know, uh, eighty eight. I am sick and tired of this too. I, I mean, it's it's just freaking ridiculous. Now, it seems like we have the tale of two seasons this year. We had the first eight games where everything was coming out aces. At that point, this is what's crazy. I remember doing a video and saying, and, and maybe it's just counting my chickens before they hatch. We were on pace to have Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, and Dalton Schultz all for over 1,000 yards. We had Zeke Elliott and Tony Pollard both on pace for 1,000 yards. We literally had five people on pace to get 1,000 yards. In the end, we only ended up with two. Is Mahomes worth $500 million? If that's what the market will bear, and I guess he is, um, Cowboys can start getting cheat code Mahomes, baby. I don't get that one. What do you mean? Cheat code Mahomes. Mike Gage, shout out to you for being a channel I'm, member I'm, for 10 want, months. Want, Carolina Cowboy, yes. Uh, but, Mark, they had to suck to get top draft picks. We'll be back on top. You'll see. Uh, your girl have a boyfriend I saw last week. Your girl have a boyfriend I saw last weekend. Okay. Your girl. My girl. Remember, remember Drake. Oh man! Don't, <laughs> shh, don't don't say nothing, man, because you know you, it's double secret here with 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 your sister. Yeah, but, but that's that's just our friend. But, 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 and you say he's just a friend, yes. and he say he's just a friend. Oh, baby, you you got what I need. But just, oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. Flashback. Flashback. Sorry. What's up? Okay. We need cap space and money problems. Okay. So here we are with Jerry Jones, who has been the guy who originally said, with the team I put together, any number of 500 people could have coached him to win the Super Bowl and proceeded to get the worst one in Barry Switzer. Who didn't win the first year, got it the second year in spite of him, and proceeded to get rid of him. Yeah, but who was coaching the team after that? Uh, um. Yes, men. Bums. We had three years of five and 11. Troy Aikman was coaching. Five no, no. and 11. Oh, Troy Aikman tried to coach that team. He I basically the, was because Barry Switzer, Barry Switzer didn't do anything. <laughs> Until we got Barry Switzer, Sean Payton, and Mike Zimmer. That were there. After the, the the '90s team, we didn't do anything. We had a good coach who didn't who wasn't a yes man, who put good assistants there and was good at picking players. And Jerry kind of ran him out the place, and then he went and got Wade Phillips, who was good with the defense, but you know he was more like your grandpa. He let you get away with anything. You know when the kids go to the grandparents' house. They come back, you need a couple of days to adjust because they didn't let them just go wild, do whatever the hell they wanted to do. You know how that goes. You, they get spoiled. And then we went from him to somebody with no experience with Jason Garrett. And here's the problem. Jason Garrett's ghost still haunts the Cowboys. You realize that, right? Kellen Moore. Kellen, Kellen Moore's the problem. There you go. Kellen Moore and the same offense that we've been running forever. Jeff Lee, what's up, man? Mahomes choked in the second half last night, 50 yards. Oh, but they won't call it. But see, here's the thing. You can't tell Cowboy fans that. They're going to say, yeah, well, he went to two Super Bowls. Well, okay, you know, I I agree with you, but it's what have you done for me lately? See, look, Carlson, Mahomes has a ring. Yeah, well, you know, and, and that's where they'll turn around. That's where the same jackass will turn around and say, hey, we got to go get Russell Wilson because he got a ring. Well, that ring was how long ago? How long ago? Because Russell Wilson ain't the same guy that he was. No, he was 
And when Russell Wilson won it, he had the number one defense. He had a Hall of Fame coach. He had a great running back. He all, he, all he had to do was be the bus driver and not make mistakes. Now, he's a better quarterback. But guess what? He doesn't have the pieces around him. And he's taken abuse over the last few years that his body is now beginning to start being Romanesque. And that means getting broke down. We have the Fords. Hold, hold my beer. There you go. That, Mike, I can't argue with that, man. I can't argue with that. You know, uh, you, you do have the Fords, you know, I, I mean, what, but I can say found one. on the road dead, but, but you know, you know what I can say though, as many times I've been in that stadium, it's a beautiful, it's a, uh, you, uh, Mike, I, I will say that <laughs> I haven't, and I haven't been there in about eight years, but Ford field is a great stadium. Uh, it, great stadium, great stadium. Watch a game. Um, players are ones on the field, not the coaches, the real fan. True, true. But there's also, you got to understand, everybody is giving Joe Burrow credit. And Joe Burrow deserves credit. Burrow is a good quarterback. He's a good quarterback. But here's what Joe Burrow, his defense held Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs offense to 55 yards passing in the second half. And they got that interception at the end of the, at the end, at overtime. They kept Kansas City from scoring except for three points to send it overtime. I'm not disrespecting greatness. You but see this this is I'm sorry. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Joe Burrow did not win that game by himself. It's a team sport. If their defense hadn't shut down Kansas City, he does not go to the Super Bowl. Point blank. If Pat Mahomes scores more than three points in the second half, they lose. Point blank. That's not disputed. That That's not, oh, what if? If Kansas City had scored more than three fucking points in the second half, they win the game. Period. So don't give me this saying that, oh, well, Joe Burrow, he won. He didn't win it on himself. He didn't. And the same way as people say, well, Jimmy Garoppolo, man, you know, that, 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 he, we should trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. I literally had people say we should go get Jimmy Garoppolo because he was in the NFC Championship game. But you're talking about a team going into yesterday that scored one touchdown in six quarters. It wasn't Jimmy Garoppolo as much as it was a defense that shut people down. And they'll go through Matthew Stafford. Hey, congratulations to Matthew Stafford. You are going to the Super Bowl. But had the 49er player who literally had a punt interception that's literally right there intercepted that ball, that game is over. You got to look at that as Aaron Donald was as important as Matthew Stafford in that game because Aaron Donald was a one-man wrecking crew. And herein lies the problem for the Cowboys. One, we got Kellen freaking Moore, who we always hear, this this, this it, it it dawned on me. You know, I I I I hear things, and sometimes it takes a while before it actually sits in to me. I, we've always heard that. I, I remember I was a Jenna Wolf when they were talking about Dak Prescott. Oh well, Dak Prescott, he needs things around him to be successful. Okay. Well, Tony Romo, how many Super Bowls did Tony Romo win? And, and I'm not trying to throw shade on Tony Romo, but understand this. I would say Tony, Romo's the Tony why Romo was a good quarterback. I think he was the reason why most years he went 8-8 eight eight is because Tony Romo. It, it, right, because he probably would have done worse. Yeah, we probably would have because okay. the guy's not that good. Probably would have done worse. But I think if Tony Romo had been on another team, I think he would have had a or chance to win a Super Bowl. If he went to the Saints, he would have definitely won a Super Bowl with the Saints. Because here's the thing about this offense is was originally designed to be a run-first offense. It's still a hybrid of what the Cowboys did back in the 90s. We're still trying to hold on to the glory years. And yeah, you look at how years. innovative some of these offenses are with the RPOs, the run-pass options, the bubble screens, how good they do with them, the spacing of the wide receivers. And then you look at our team and you say, what are they doing? And if they don't get the running game going, 
because you don't have better offensive linemen than the defenses, which we don't any longer. I know they'll tell you that the Cowboys got a great – no, we don't. We don't. Tyron Smith is old and can't stay healthy. Let him go. Lyle Collins has come back worse than he was after the hip surgery. Connor Williams, he is the flag magnet. Oh, Doug Free. Tyler oh, Badish is no Travis Frederick. You got one great offensive lineman in Zach Martin, who is actually getting in his 30s. And then don't you have um, – isn't Steele serviceable? Can't argue with that two years versus six years. But isn't Steele serviceable? Can't argue with what, Doc Holliday? I can't argue with what. I can argue with any goddamn thing. I can't argue with what? With Joe Burrow? Hey, Joe, I, I'm, not, I'm not mad at Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, he played well. But he didn't play by himself. It wasn't like everybody said, let's just sit on the sidelines because all we need is Joe Burrow out there. It don't work that way. It don't. See, when Kellen Moore's offense, when everybody's healthy, oh, we look good. When Tyron Smith is not dealing with a, a sore ankle, he can bowl over people. Yeah, but he's not doing that. When Zeke Elliott has a lane and he's going downhill and he's not nicked up, yeah, he can pick up a few yards. And when that happens and people put eight men in the box, Sure. We got Amari and CD, and it, it all works great then. But the problem is, is everybody knows what you're doing. And if you can't run the ball, which we weren't the second half of the season, and your quarterback is still dealing with calf injuries and ankles and can't run, you're not going anywhere with that offense. There's no innovation. You look at other teams, it's not so much that we necessarily have better players the out there. I think it's the coaching. We're going where they're not. I think it's the coaching. Well, that's a, there you go. And so you look at the pedigree, and see, this is my thing with Jason Garrett. Jason Garrett was quarterback coach. For one year under Nick Saban, who Nick Saban said, you know what? <laughs> I'm out of here during the season. I'm going back to college. I'll see you with three games left. You had one year of being a quarterback coach. You then become offensive coordinator for the Cowboys. What? Is, are you, you talking about Kellen Moore? No, I'm talking about Jason Garrett. We'll get to Kellen Moore in a it's, second. It sounds similar. Hold on, hold on. It sounds similar. Hold on. So – you got Jason Garrett, who now went from being a quarterback's coach, you know, where everybody thinks he was a genius because he was behind Troy Aikman, becomes the offensive coordinator, and then immediately becomes the head coach. Mark, you and your wife, Super Bowl work. Not anymore. Not anymore. My wife has actually... Uh, no longer working with the United Way. She's actually, um, we're actually working on our real estate and everything else and stuff like that. So, no, no more Super Bowls until the Cowboys go in. That's the next time I will go to the Super Bowl. So, no time soon, apparently, at least not this year. So, um, back to this thing with Jason Garrett. When Jason Garrett became the head coach, the only position he was a quarterback's coach for one year. He wasn't like an offensive assistant he wasn't an offensive line coach he didn't have all those years of experience enter kellen moore i like kellen moore but i don't know that he is the boy genius like sean mcveigh or or you know any of the other young ones poop you know what i i tell you what poop poop i told you guys don't come into my house with dog shit on your shoes, okay? Don't come in my house with dog shit on your shoes. And certainly don't come in as poop. If you're poop coming to my house, don't come in. Junior. You're out. Don't you do it. Don't you. Poop, get out. No poop in my I house. I got lower up the go. I got lower up the go. You believe poop just came in my house? Bye, Felicia. Come in here talking some smack. <sighs> Bengals have better coaching. Well, Bengals benefited from a couple things. A down year in their division, 
Okay, the Steelers with Big Ben were not as good. Lamar Jackson definitely, definitely stayed injured most of the time. And Baker Mayfield sucks. So their division, I mean, I know the Steelers made the playoffs, but the the AFC was actually kind of down this year. The Browns, all they had to do is win one game. Couldn't do it. Couldn't win one game to win the division. Couldn't do it. That's sad. Um, They benefited from their division being weaker than usual. They also benefited from some of the big boys being knocked out as well, you know, um, and the AFC being a down year. You had to look at the best teams that were in the NFC this year. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Sugar Daddy, I need Mark Sugarfinger. He's gone rogue. Um, Alan Williams, same here, still depressed from the wild card game. I, I am too. So enter Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore started out as a backup quarterback. For the Lions. For the Lions. He was brought here because Scott Linehan. Scott Linehan, offensive coordinator, who was very predictable. In 2016, um, in 2016, when we actually played really well, was the pinnacle of what you have with this offense. You had a Zeke Kelly who was young. You had a great rushing attack. You had a great offensive line that could overpower defenses. And with that, just like in 2014, the team was successful. They made the playoffs. The problem has always been when your offensive line isn't that good or your running game's not there, take a look at the track record of what this offense has done. It hasn't. It fails. And here is the problem. You had your offensive line in transition because nobody could stay healthy and on there or play well enough to keep their job, Connor Williams, then Connor McGovern, and then back to Connor Williams. Uh, I don't need to buy any more TVs. I got enough TV. I got a couple of 65s here. I don't have any place to put any bigger ones in here. I believe Jerry Jones is too involved with the team. Um, could be. Uh, we don't know exactly. Forever fashion runway, in my opinion, we have to get better left guard and center and show up in the playoffs. Yes, I agree 100%. Definitely, the offensive line has to get better. We also have to be able to run the ball better. Now, shout out to C.D. Lamp. You got forever fashion runway? Yeah, I got, I got that. Take the money out! We got C.D. Lamb in the Pro Bowl. Shout out to him. Does anybody else see it as a problem that our $22 million wide receiver is not in the Pro Bowl? No. Does that, that huh? I mean, no, I, I'm just I saying. Say you, I don't see nothing wrong with that. No, I, I do. I, I think a guy that you're paying, guys that you're paying $22 million a year as a wide receiver, one of the top yeah, paid ones, what, they, they need to perform. You see that some of those routes he was checking out? I've I seen it. Then, okay, <laughs> but okay, you, but, but you don't have a problem? No, no, I'm, I'm not saying that they should give it to him. I got to say that if you are paying somebody to be the man, that they have to be the man. I don't. I just. Am I wrong on that, Bobby? Bobby Ice. Dak and passing game will be fine next season. We need an O line and a passing and running next. Season. I agree. I agree, Bobby. I'm. I'm not disputing that. But people believe that oh, if we just go get Pat Mahomes or if we just go get Joe Burrow or we go get Russell Wilson, we'll be fine. I don't. I don't want. I don't want Patrick Mahomes and his baggage with the Dallas Cowboys. The return of poop. Poop, I just timed you out. Take your shoe. Poop. Look, you better bring some, like, Lysol with your poop because I'm not trying to smell no shit. I'm not trying to smell no shit up in here. Okay? Damn. People always bringing shit to my house. Um, Just chilling. What's up? Crazy Corvette. What's up, little crazy Corvette? I love Coop. I love Cooper, too. But guess what? I love guys that are performing. And we got to have guys that are performing. If our big dogs that are getting paid money aren't performing, we got a problem. Look at this. 
I want you to look, 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 we'll get rid of, we'll come back to prime time. Look at this. Next year, as we sit here, guys, you, you see this red number right here? $21.6 million. Oh, wrong. Wrong clip, sorry. I don't often watch Eagle Channel. But when I. Sorry, I got the wrong. Too many damn buttons over here. You, you see this right here? That's $21 million. We're over the cap. We're over the cap. So let's go down the list of problems we have. I don't have a problem with paying for something that does the job. Upstairs in my workshop, I just invested $10,000. And that's a lot of money to me. That's, that's, that, I mean, that's between house, car, this machine. That's the order of things that I've spent a whole bunch of money on. House, cars, this piece of equipment. But if it does the job that you need, it doesn't matter what it costs. If it will pay for what it costs, it doesn't matter what it costs. The bottom line is, does it do what you need it to do? If it does, you don't worry about what it costs. See, look, look at this. You guys remember the big subs, right? Yeah, I, I, I look, look. That. This inspiration came today, and, and, and Michael designed it. Look, check that out. The, the middle part. So we're going to the actual. We're going to paint the inside of this, and, and the the reliefs. We're going to epoxy this. Tell me, okay? You see that? Now, if you want one, Joe Boo's sub, big sub. Now we could we could sell those as, as someone wants one. Well, wants one. We're, we're working on some we're, we're working on a few things. So, to buy this machine, I know it's not going to be like in, in a month. It's going to die and need to be replaced. I know that it's going to be here, ready to go for years to come. I've invested a lot of money and a lot of tools that some of which are as old as my son, okay? So it's not about the money if it does the job. But here's where you start wondering. Tyron Smith doesn't do the job. Hold on. Demarcus Lawrence, $27 million next year. And Michael Parsons' production went down. 27, hold on, hold on. <laughs> $27 million. I would have think that I would have thought that Michael Parsons would have got the record broken for it. Let, let's, let's look at this while, while we're here, okay? I, I'm just thinking to myself: Were we better off paying Demarcus Lawrence and Demarcus D-Law? When I see you next year, please don't kill me. But I'm sitting here looking at it since he got his contract, what he has gotten, okay? He got five sacks in 2019, the year he got the contract, down from 10 and a half, which was down from 14 and a half. 2020, we got six and a half, right? And I know that I know they'll say, hey, but he's great in the run game. Well, you know what? Our run game stopping has sucked for years. We've sucked with D-Law out on the running game, too. Okay. We've sucked. So as Doc Walker would say, former Washington Redskin, former uh um football team, and I guess now Commanders, which is the dumbest name I've ever heard for a football. Commanders, they ain't commanding shit. I thought, now, if they said the, uh, the Washington trash dump, I'd be on board with that one because <laughs> that's exactly what yeah, they exactly are. What but they are. be that as it may, you got a guy who has got five sacks, six and a half sacks, and three sacks, and he is your second highest salary cap hit. To me, that's a problem. When I'm $21 million over it, I don't see where I'm getting a return on my investment. That's 14 and a half sacks over three years. That's less than five sacks a year. Just saying. Amari Cooper, he wasn't your leading receiver. You had issues and questions where was it more about going out or the team? It's $22 million. Don't have a problem if you are that pro bowler, that guy that's getting 100 reception, that guy that's making plays in, when it's big time. Don't have a problem with the number. But if you're the number two leading receiver on the team, that's a problem. Dak, $34 million um, next year. 
that's going to be reduced because the restructuring the contract. You'll probably, you know, be down somewhere around 20, giving us some cap relief. Hey, it's a lot of money, but, you know, when you start looking and saying that uh, Matty Ice is going to be 46 and Kirk Cousins is going to be like 44, 34 don't sound so bad. Joanne Gonzalez, what's up? Tyron Smith, $17 million. Again, don't have a problem with all the money that Tyron Smith has made in the past. The June 1st cut. But, but the problem now today. is I got seven good games out of Tyron Smith. I thought you said I was turning over two years. That's, that's, that's uh, I'm just saying that he the, the first seven games of the season, he was good. But then he missed. You know, he missed games after that, and then he wasn't as good when he came back. Don't have a problem paying it if you're getting it. Can, can anybody say Tyron Smith is going to play 14 games next year and be lights out? I, I don't know how anybody can say that. Can, to be honest. I, I don't know how you can say that. And, again, we're $21 million over the cap. Zeke, unfortunately. You can't get rid of until next year. You can't year. get rid of Zeke because Jerry Jones does what he always does. You know, I got my pet players, and we're going to take care of them. You can't get you know, rid of he bullshitted the around year. and ended up paying this contract that goes out to 2027. And here it is. If you cut Zeke Elliott, it's going to cost you $30 million on the cap. And a team that's $21 million over, it's cheaper to keep her. That's what they always say about getting divorced. It's cheaper to keep her. Then you got Lyle Collins. Lyle Collins, Mr. I missed seven drug test because the dog ate my homework. He missed six games because of that. that I mean, that, that right there is just like. A, but then they gave him a two-game suspension. They fought it. And well, no, he had a six game. They had it reduced down to two or three. Yeah, yeah, and then he said, no, nah, that's not good enough. And he fought, and they said, you know what? So Since you, you don't like that, we're going to give you the full thing and, and get out. Because some of those, I can understand him missing a few of those. Okay, but, but at some point you have to say, I got to go pee. I, 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 I got to go pee. I got to go pee. But when your coach passes away in COVID, I can understand that. But the other ones, like, there's no excuse for missing all of them. One or two, maybe three, I could say that. Exactly. But when you get to six or seven, that, at some point much. you got to say, they're going to be coming back at me. Of course they are. I've got to do this somehow. Can I mail the P in? You know, can, can you guys come by where I'm at? I mean, can we work something out here? I know over here bribing. The, because bribing the, the, do, the person. And see, that goes beyond just Lyle Collins. That hurts the team. And here it is. Actually. $15 million. Actually, we're winning games when he was out when we came back. He started well, because he, he wasn't part of the rotation there. And then you get down to Anthony Brown um, at six and a half million dollars. But here's the thing: when you start looking so at if you make Lyle Collins, a, you only get one million. If you make him a pre-cut, but you, have, you just had to get down. down you can the do cap. the post now. Here's here's you just here's, had to get down the cap before the season started. You do, and you can, now here's the thing: you can restructure. These. You can go through because here's how restructuring works: take the base salary number here, right? You can take that base salary and say, okay, we're going to change that base salary number to $1 million, and we're going to say that that's guaranteed money, right? So you take that $19 million, you make it one right here, and basically you take the 19 and divide it by the years left on the contract. So if there's four years left on the contract, that $18 million is divided by four. So 18 divided by four is what? Uh, basically $4.5 million. So then $4.5 million would be added to the $1 million base salary. So his cap number would end up going from 27 to 5 and a half. So that would save you $22 million. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. I messed up on it. That would take that $19 million of base money and convert it to his prorated bonus. Yeah, but if you get rid of him, you get 19. You get, I think so the prorated bonus would be $8 million plus the 5 and a half. So that would be 13 and a half. That would save you $14 million on the cap. But. But you get 20, you get almost 20 for him to let him get, walk June 1st. True. And, and he was, and. Okay, but. Michael Parsons' production went down. So that's, that's one of the decisions that have to be made. That one, and, that and so, what, and when people say, yeah, but you can't do that. Asia Robinson, what's up, Asia? 
Well, they did it with DeMarcus Ware. DeMarcus Ware said they said trade him. But, well, they, they needed to do it sooner than later. Because you're not going to be able to trade D-Law for, nobody's going to take off $27 million for yeah, D-Law. you can let him go and get 19. Well, you know, that's but, bad. That's bad. But, but here's the question. So they originally signed him to the contract. We always get stuck with this thing. We can't, oh, as soon as we let go of Mike, I mean, of um, Jalen Smith, fans are, he's going to come back and haunt us. I think he only got one sack. We literally had people who said we shouldn't cut Jalen Smith he only, because he's going to come back and haunt he only us. We had one sack and a handful of tackles after he left us with New York. I agree. And he was the worst grade. I agree with that 100%. When he was with the, when he was, when he was, when he was, had a couple calls. But the, perspe- the perception, perception is Bay. they're a great player and we can't do without it. Well, here's the reality if we didn't bust a grape and you were here, we can bust a grape. We, we cannot bust a grape with you gone. And at least save the money. Because if you're saying, oh, well, we can't live without, you know, DeMarcus uh, Lawrence, we can't live without Amari Cooper, and we can't live without, you know, Tyron Smith and Zeke and Lyle Collins, well, what did they deliver? What did they deliver? <laughs> Michael Parsons. Mark Scott. Parsons Here's, went downhill. He, you want let, let, let me let me change cameras here. Let me answer that question as fully as I can. In my opinion, what was Dak's problem at the end of the season if he had one at all? Multitude of things. One, I don't believe Dak was fully healthy. Of course he was. From the time he okay, here, here's what I want you to think about for a second here. <laughs> From, of course, us going through training camp, we had the shoulder issue where they said he was never going to be healthy. Shoulder, I think, was okay. The calf strain. I want you to think about the calf strain. Typically, calf strain is a couple weeks minimum. Think about Michael Gallup, who had a calf strain at week one. He didn't get back to what, week nine? Yeah. Week ten? Right? And then got injured at the end of the season. Right, and then got injured again. So if you're telling me that Dak Prescott missed one game and he had a procedure where they took his blood, put it in a centrifuge to pull out some cells to inject into his calf, that's kind of a serious injury. Because I'm going to tell you that same treatment that they did with Dak in his calf. I don't know if you guys have, you know, if you've watched me for a while, you've seen me go to my orthopedist where I've gotten the uh, chicken grease injections in my knee I got a needle about this long and they put in the center of my knee with this stuff that's like really it's 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 made from the chicken's cone it's like a gel and they inject it in there to be like a cushion okay that's the first thing they try that doesn't work to try and buy you some more time they take your blood out they put it through a centrifuge they take these cells out and they inject it in there and it stimulates growth. Well, the stimulating growth isn't something that happens overnight. It takes time. This is something that takes weeks to work. When I saw Dak Prescott in the pocket trying to escape defenders, that's not the same Dak that I've seen running. In fact, maybe what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll take some game clips and I'll pull some and compare some from you know a couple years ago to now. To me, he didn't look like he could escape. Well, a lot of that. He could not buy the time in the pocket like he used to. That's something I think will get better with the offseason. And when you hear him, hey, you know, you got a free ride to the Pro Bowl and all that, and him saying, nah, bro, I'm going to stay here because I need to rest. To me, that says the leg is still not quite right. He's I mean, got some issues with it. Because it's not like there's any stress in the Pro Bowl. And it's, and, and it's Las Vegas. It's not like going to Hawaii. Still. But it's hanging out with your peeps. It's getting that recognition of saying, I'm a pro bowler again. So at the end of your career, you say, eight-time pro bowler or whatever it is. You just can. But to me, that's the first problem. And here's the problem when you have leg problems. If you watch sometimes when Dak was throwing, when he would scramble out, he would do kind of this hop skip, hop skip, and he's throwing, and he's off the ground. 
Man, sometimes uh, I mean, you've seen gender, it, right? Genuinely, too. Like so to me, funny. it's like maybe that calf never really got a chance to heal. That's the first problem. Second problem, and you're going to say I'm just making excuses, but without the running game, teams became one-dimensional going against him. And they kept putting the pressure up on him, could not escape, and still made some plays, still got some points. I mean, we did score more points against San Francisco than Green Bay did. At least he got in the end zone. I know Aaron Rodgers didn't. That was the next problem. Third problem is you got an offensive line that looks like they're on skates. That literally. And then the final problem, every time we get a fucking good play, it seemed like we'd have a goddamn penalty. And penalties are drive killers. I know the, the haters out there will say, we'll just shut up and play. I'm sorry. You look at Kansas City and they get one or two calls against them in a game, we get 14. They are drive killers. So, fix Dak. One, I think we need a new fucking offense. I'm sick and tired of the Kellen Moore, um, Scott Linehan, Jason Garrett offense. Mike McCarthy, you did the West Coast. Know, this, uh, why, why, why is it that Kellen Moore and what he's doing is better than what you used to do with Aaron exactly. freaking Rodgers? Okay? Second thing, we must fix the offensive line. I'm going to go on there like Vash Lombardi, who every year says draft an offensive lineman. Sorry. This year we Connor did. Williams, Tyler Badish. They're not good enough. They're not good enough. And if Tyron Smith can't stay healthy, you got to have somebody else that can play. And maybe the maybe the thing is to me, I think the third best offensive lineman we have is Terrence Steele. And Terrence Steele should be playing right tackle day one. And if Lyle Collins can't play guard, then get him the hell out of here. Because you must have good guard play and good tackles. If you want to say we're going to roll the dice on Tyron Smith, fine then draft a, a, a tackle that will become a swing tackle that first year that will be Tyron Smith's backup or backing up the line. No, I think you let Tyron Smith go. You get 13 for him. You know, but here's the thing. You know what, Fabian, Fabian, Earth. Fabian, do you have that great hair, that great hair, Fabian? Here's the problem. You can't just keep just, oh, just fire him. That, that, that's what I hear from all you guys. Well, fire him, trade him, just get rid It doesn't work all the time. Look at how many coaches have been fired in Chicago. Look at how many coaches have been fired in New York. And they still end up with the same shit. I agree. You do need to make sure. Uh, you want to say Dan Quinn needs to go? Colin Moore needs to go. You've got to, at some point, say we need some stability. Because when you change every year, when it's always something new, your players never get a chance to learn it. And that's the problem because, see, Joe Montana, learning the West Coast offense, being there year after year after year, Tom Brady being there with Bill Belichick, they understand the offense like the back of their hands. You see more things because you're used to it. You say, oh, fire everybody. Okay, so now we're going to fire and start over with somebody else. Now we got to got the learning curve for them to come in. Bottom line is this. Mike McCarthy needs to call the plays, and you need to change your offense. Exactly. Michael Flores. Okay, then what's the solution there, buddy? <laughs> what is your so I, I hear here I, I keep hearing, you know, I, we got running backs that are running 25 yards a game. We got offensive lines that stink, and your whole solution is Dak is the problem. So go ahead. Go, go ahead. I tell you what. Go right ahead. Take three picks, three number one picks, trade for Russell Wilson and bring him here. Go ahead. Trade for him and bring him here. Because you know something that's so stupid? No, 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 hold on. This is, this is the stupid jackass comments that you get out there. Because you go through, oh, if we just get Russell Wilson in here, we're okay. You're, what happened with Russell Wilson and those guys? What happened to Russell Wilson and those? Because basically, Downhill. the way his offense played this year 
was the way our offense played the second half of the season when Zeke was hurt, when Tony Pollard was hurt, when Michael Gallup was hurt, when Tyron Smith was hurt. So you think if you bring Russell Wilson here with the same damn issues that he had in Seattle, that all of a sudden it's going to bring you a Super Bowl? Boy, you just plain stupid or crazy. I don't know what you're looking at here. I could see if it was Dak's got, you know, 30 interceptions and 10 touchdowns. I can see and say, yeah, you're right. That's the quarterback problem. But when I see a lack of production from my running game, a lack of production from my offensive line, a damn kicker who can't kick freaking extra points and field goals, and your thing is Dak's the problem. Okay, well, then give me the goddamn solution then. Because if you go ahead and send your number one picks to try and bring in another quarterback here, who are you going to get to go around them? You going to bring Russell Wilson here and stuff, Tyron Smith, uh, 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 Connor Williams, and Tyler Badish stack there with him? And think that Russell Wilson is going to lead you to a Super Bowl because he leads his team to the Super Bowl every freaking year? Come on, man. They went to two Super Bowls with him. They when they the had defense. the number one defense. That's what people don't seem to understand. And they had beast mode. What have they done since then? That's my question. Nothing. Exactly. That's why. That's my thing. What have they done since? And, and don't don't get me started on, on – well, let's let's bring Aaron Rodgers in. Aaron Rodgers ain't going to play here with Mike McCarthy. Yeah, he's playing with Mike but, McCarthy. But Come on now. You talk about paying Dak too much. What has Aaron Rodgers done? The, the, I believe they were one and done, too, in the playoffs here, weren't they? Yeah, they had the number one seed and the one done. Number one seed and the one done. Okay. Here's the deal. You had a coach who had a 6-10 and ten season. We still had a 12 and five year. If we had regressed from the six to 10, I'd say, yeah, fire the coach. But we went from six and 10 to 12 and five. We doubled our wins and cut our losses in half. And we say, fire that guy. You know what that's like? I'm going to tell you, you know what? Y'all just made me think. Let me pull. Let, let me pull it up here because I, I want you to understand exactly what you're saying. Sorry, I'm looking this up. Da, 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 da. Okay, I want you guys to go and do, 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 do. hold on. Let me go back a few years. Ta ta da ta 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 da ta 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 da ta 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 da ta Jim Schwartz, okay. All right. I want you guys to look over here at my monitor. In twenty thirteen, after having several years of disappointment, which is a line. I don't know if Mike is still here or not. They finished as usual, bottom half of their division, 7-9, and nine, the Detroit Lions with Jim Schwartz. The next season, they hired Jim Caldwell. They play second in their division. They're 11-5. and five. This is the Detroit Lions, 11-5. and five. That's pretty good. They got Matthew Stafford. They've got Megatron. They've got um, Golden Tate. They have Namakin Sue. You know, they, they, they really made the playoffs, right? Okay. The next year, 7-9, and nine, okay? Took a step back with Jim Swartz, but, you know, that kind of happens. The next year, 9-7, and seven, second in the division. They made the playoffs. Third year. Nine and seven. So in three years, they had one losing season. They made the playoffs twice. We're not talking about the Dallas Cowboys here because the Lions making it to the playoffs is like us making it to the Super Bowl. Am I wrong? No. What never happened? I think they've been in the playoffs four times since the Super Bowl era started. And two times was with Jim Caldwell. And you know what they said? That ain't good enough. You know, 
fire him. Fire him because he ain't doing the job. He ain't building anything. So they go out and they get Matt Patricia. We'll get a Bill Belichick guy. That's right. He's a freaking genius. And they go 6-10. and ten, Fourth in the division. The next year, they go 3-12. and 12, Fourth in the division. They finally fire him midseason, and they end up 5-11. and 11. After that, they hired Dan Campbell, 13, 3 and 13. So they had a guy who was doing something, and maybe had they been given a little more time, he might have actually done something with them. But instead, we're going to go get this new, nice new hot candidate. We're going to get a, a Matt Patricia because he's done great things under Bill Belichick. And they fell on their fucking face. So you say, get rid of, fire everybody, the coach staff, and we're going to start all over again. Well, Maybe that's the way. I, I think that you need, you got to give him at least one more year. Uh, you got to give him at least one more year. You say give Kellen Moore one more year? I think Kellen Moore needs to go Fabian, today. Fabian, exactly my point. It's the entire coaching staff. So the entire coaching staff is 12 and 5, and that's not good. So what coaching staff are you bringing in, Fabian? I think he's what, what's this, what, what, what are you bringing in? Yeah, well, even with, okay, even an offensive coordinator, who are you bringing in right now? I saw somebody out there better than Kellen Moore. Oh, that that's probably true. That's, that's, I'm just that's pointing out that that we always that the, here's the funny thing, we always think there's something better out there. We looked and we said, let's go get Roy Williams because <laughs> Roy Williams, he's better than anything we got. Let's trade away some draft picks to get him. Yes. That's where famous like right? the guys from the Lions. Oh, man, man, let's go get him because he's done some great things with the Lions. Let's oh, bring him in here. And what happened? Yeah, Fell on his face. Well, look, we went in uh, two number ones for Joey Galloway because he's better than anything we got. And what happened? Dude got injured and never really played worth jack for us. Remember when y'all said, go get Urban Meyer? We That's the guy we need to coach. You see what happened in Jacksonville? That was a dumpster fire. Cliff Kingsbury, let's go get him. You see how they kind of fuck up going down the, the, the stretch every year? Here's the reality. There's very few people out there, very few, that can do really special things. And just throwing shit on the wall and thinking that that's got to be better. Sometimes just the change alone Fucks up what this other person may have been doing. Just fire Kellen and I'll be happy. Well, here's what you do to me. Because I know they don't want to fire Kellen more. And, and it would be a terrible thing for him to be going out coaching searches, you know, as a head coaching candidate and then get fired from there. I, I'm not sure that that's necessarily the answer. But maybe what it is is, and since his nuts are in the sling, excuse my language, lady, um, Mike McCarthy. We're going to change the offense. We're going to change the way we do things out here. We're going to change the way we eat. We're going to change the way we run. We're going to change the way we pass the football. We are going to do some different shit to try and get a different result. And that's it. Mike, since it's your ass out there, instead of you saying at the press conference, well, the installer calls the play, you better be the installer, and you better call the plays because Dan Quinn's got the defense. And he's breathing down your neck to be the next head coach. I just got here, and these DAC haters make me sick. I'm with you on that one, Jim Laws. Quiet, Tony. Doug Peterson. See, here's the thing. I don't know that Doug Peterson's a great coach either because what worked for him was having uh, Indianapolis uh, Frank Wright. Yeah, Frank Wright got the most out of Carson Wentz. The two best years of Carson Wentz. Not that they were, you know, special this past year. We're under Frank Wright. Yeah, but he actually played good until he fell on his feet, fell on his face toward the end of the season. Right. <laughs> and, and you could look at Atlanta when, when he had Kyle Shanahan. That's when they went to the Super Bowl. You know, I understand coaching matters. And I don't know that Kellen Moore has enough experience being quarterback coach for the Cowboys one year than the offensive coordinator having been the protege of Scott Linehan. And Jason Garrett. Get rid of McCarthy. Well, here's the thing, though, Chris. Who's, who's better? At this point, the way the system is being run is 
It's not Mike McCarthy's offense. It's Kellen Moore. Okay, it's not Mike McCarthy's offense. Kellen Mike Moore. McCarthy is just a figurehead. He's the guy to go to the he press conference. Him. He's telling you he's not calling the plays. He's just giving, okay, when they say, here's what we're going to run, okay. So firing him is not going to do anything. It's your coordinators. Um, hey, Mark, Doug Peterson is interviewing for the Saints job. Well, he, well. Kellen Moore's interview for every job, but how? What did that do? I think I, I'm with you. I think McCarthy needs to call plays, and I think they need to go to the West Coast offense. They do because what we have now is not working. Jason, <laughs> he still has a contract with the Cowboys right now, and I think he will still be there. Go Birds! Um, can't get played, bro. I'm chilling. At Mark, um, no, we don't. Great quarterback, mediocre offensive coaching, good defensive coaching, mediocre for offensive line, mediocre running back, good defense, good receivers. Bobby Ice, you summed it up pretty good. Okay, Philly, Philly fan. Um, Philly, man, how you doing, man? Actually, I need to talk to you about uh, Thrive, man. It's doing some great things, but I got a couple questions on some things we can do with it. Actually, I guess we could call customer service. Jim Laws, I hear you, my man. Um, will we go get Sean Payton, who basically is uh, that's Cowboy Jaden. That's where you got to look at this too. It's not like, and this is what's crazy because if we'd have. Uh, Let's go. Let's go to the statistics here. If you're not satisfied, if you're not satisfied with um, Mike McCarthy, you're not going to be satisfied with Sean Payton. Because here's the thing. Hate to tell you guys, he had three seasons of seven and nine in a row. Okay? And then eleven and five, one win, one loss in the playoffs. Thirteen and three, one win, one loss in the playoffs. Thirteen and three, one loss in the playoffs. And then twelve and four, one win, one loss in the playoffs. Guys. You're going to tell me that you – know, then don't tell me that it was he had a crappy quarterback because he had Drew Brees. And at that time, they had my boy, Demario Davis, and a great defense. They didn't go to the Super Bowl those years. So looking at that, you get Sean Payton here, and he does the same thing Mike McCarthy, 12-5, and five, we don't go to the Super Bowl. What are you going to do then? What are you going to say then? Who are you going to say go get? I – who are you going to say to go get? That's what I want to know. Or we'll be back to going ahead and saying, get one of these college coaches. Sean Payton in as GM. That ain't going to happen. No, Jerry Jones wants that title. You think Michael Flores needs a permanent? Okay. Sorry, I haven't been at. There's somebody here who's got, I don't know what that language is, but shout out to you. He's got V U R. Dot FYI. What is that? That's a, that's a, that's a, is that a, a spam or someone spamming? How do you know it's spam? Because when you start putting those weird. No, I think that's a, that's a language. That's like Russian or something. It probably is, but it looks like they're spamming. Okay. Cowboy Cowley. Wait a minute. Your wife have uh, done Thrive. Good stuff to the Thrive website. That's what I use for my channel memberships and stuff because I want to be able to keep in touch with my channel members. Shout out. Oh, by the way, uh, come Wednesday night, this Wednesday, the day after tomorrow, it will be our first ladies night Zoom call. Okay. Now it's, it's not, it's not going to be. It's not going to be for all y'all. 
It's only for the ladies like Gina Thorne, Gina C., Roland's Review, my wife. I'll be there talking about whatever you ladies want to talk about. And so I know a bunch of y'all have already registered for that, so I can't wait to uh, to see y'all. So who? Michael Mentality? Hey, Michael. Your, 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 your thing is hidden. You know what? No, it's because of his. Guess what you get? It's because of his language. You get blocked. And go cry to Philly 500. How about that? Oh, boom. Oh, that's fancy. Okay. That's because. Did somebody get Flores? I do love Jim Caldwell. Oh, I would love to have Jim Caldwell for our offensive coordinator. I mean, he, he did work with Peyton Manning, you know, in the Super Bowl. Uh, Prescott was reading defense is better a few years ago. Something sent him back. Yeah, injury. Uh, he broke Romo's record with a bad wheel. I, I know, but th- people won't give him credit. Uh, lo- I love weed. Unless you're a lady, um, you uh, can't join in. It's a lady special. It's a little subgroup that we have. You know, they can talk about anything that they want. Anything. I, I don't. I, I'm scared. I'm gonna be scared because there's gonna be all these ladies in here, and and I, I. Oh boy. But we're gonna have fun with it. We'll let you know how it works out. Um, Roland's review. This is the brainstorm of Roland's review. I'm here in Cincinnati, and before the season, everybody wanted to get rid of Zach Taylor. Now, the ho- totally different. Of course. You know, they gave him enough time. Two years, look like ass. Third year, got it together. Anyway, oh, we need to do a drawing. Don't, are, is it, it's 10, 15? My, how the time flies when you got a whole bunch of trolls. Let's go ahead and do this drawing here. We'll do something special in the workshop. We'll do actually something with the X carve and stuff and get you guys sent. Um, Space Cowboy, I still think we need to, to draft the running back. Not in the first round, we don't. No. I'm beginning to think that, you know, one of these fourth, fifth round draft pick running backs, young uh, young stud. He's a sixth round running back that's actually, that's actually in the Super Bowl this year. Yep. Six rounds. I figured, I figured it's what he's around with. Like How do you become a channel member? Um, Actually, well, here, i tell you what. Let me, hold on, Mike, before you get there. Let me. Let me pull this real quick because he wants to know, how do I become a channel member? You're shaking it like it's hot. No, it's fine. Oh, yeah, the link. Uh, and I'm going to be listening to my damn show. I need to redo that. Hey, friends, Mark Holmes here. I, I, I need to redo that because that's, that, that's my wife. You know, my wife is um, helping to take care of um, the Thrive site and managing things. And my wife is a perfectionist. Um, and I'm kind of like, it's cool. She's like, it was 2019. You need to update it. It's like, okay. So this is the link for the membership. So let me pop that up there. Boom. There you go. And. Or replace your pin. And also, too, check out Michael Anthony. Michael Anthony is back. Back again. Mike is back. So tell a friend. Johnny White. What's up, Johnny? Johnny. I met Johnny when we were at Lava Cantina. That was like three years ago. We were there with Cowboys Experience. He ended up. I can't remember if he sent me a Facebook message or if it was um, what it was. What did he, I think he actually got five Joe Bartys, many ones. But he ended up sending messages like, are you going to be there? Because I'm coming, I'm coming. And he came in there. He had a license plate of Cowboys oh, number yeah, one fan. Him, yeah, I remember him there. In fact, I was working on the closing video because my wife sent me all the now pictures and stuff on there. So I, I didn't get a chance to get it finished before that. Now I know you're talking about it. Asia Robinson said she just subbed to your channel. Shout out to Asia Robinson. Don't stop this live talk yet, Mark. Brad, but I'm tired, Brad. We got tomorrow. 
I'm tired, bro. Yeah, that, that, Jerry has to stop is, loving these players. Game. And see, that Carolina Cowboy, you know, that's part of the problem. Sometimes we fall in love with players and we hold on them for too long. Instead of understanding, sometimes it's better to let them go and get that compensatory. It, it take, just take a look right now. Take a look at our defense and a lot of the pieces that we have. I know that a lot of them did, didn't get a chance to play. But, you know, we got uh, Kevin Joseph that's out there. We got, of course, OC. We got Goldston. Um, God, what's the linebacker who got injured? Um, geez. We got Quentin Bohannon. We got a lot of pieces. Not all of them are going to pan out. But we got a lot of those pieces because of people that left the year before. You understand? We let go DeMarco Murray, and it was the best thing that happened because that actually led to us having the pick that got to Mac, uh, Dak Prescott. Right. And we got, because you could have been scared and said, how are you going to let go a guy who just rushed for 1,800 yards? Are you crazy or just plain stupid? But we did, and it was the best thing. Yeah, Dak Prescott. Every time we go through, it seems like, and we do one of these big contracts for the guys, we never get dividends from them. Tony Sampson, center, center, center that can play left guard center. Jabril Cox, thank you. Right. Jabril Cox, I think, is actually going to be a really good linebacker for us. Um, you know, after he gets past the injury. Boss Cowboys was speaking facts about Kellen Moore. What do you say about Kellen Moore? That he's a bum and needs to go? Well, that's what everybody's saying. He, he needs to go. Asia, we had um Cauliflower rice, um, fried rice, jeez, shrimp fried rice. That's what I had. It was good. It was real good. I have the recipe up on my other channel. Mark, did you say that you think Dak was injured but wasn't injured when he padded his stats against the Eagles backups in week 17? Well, here's the thing. Oh, Aaron. Yeah, I think his injury... I think he actually was still injured. I think he did play the rest of the season injured because here's the problem with football. It's really not if you're injured, but how severe you're injured. And you can't tell me the way that he was running and passing that that leg was right. And, and uh, Michael Gallup, look how long it took him before he right. came back. Before he missed back. one week with a calf strain, only one week? Actually, it was two weeks we got to buy. And when you're working on an injury that doesn't have a chance to heal, it doesn't heal. Who are the Cowboys losing to free agency? It could be everybody. It could be Michael Gallup. It could be Randy Gregory. It could be Brett Irving. It could be Connor Williams. It could be um, Cedric Wilson. It could be, well, no, D-Law, he's not a free agent, but um, he'd be cut. But we have a lot. We have 21 free agents. Keanu O'Neill, J. Ron Curse, um, Randy Gregory, um, uh, Leighton Vander Esch. Um, Jordan Lewis, I think is Jordan. I think I think Jordan Lewis might be another one. So we have a lot of players that they have to make decisions on, and we'll see where they go. So Johnny, wait, we can actually send you a message. Salute, brother. Mean Mug Forty Four. Shout out to you. We do. Uh, Mark, if he was injured, why play meaningless games against the Eagles backup players? Why? Because they thought they'd be better suited playing players and making sure they were ready for the next game versus having them sit out because we've sat out before um, having bye weeks and done nothing. So later, Michael Flores, Michael Flores, they told me I need to block your ass. So we'll give you a chance. All right. You got anything else to add there, Mike? You got your new channel that's up and running. Definitely help a brother out, check him out, see what he's doing. And, um, before we go, let, let's let's have fun. Let's let's make it a good night. I fire Howie. Fucking fire the motherfucker. Stupid motherfucker. What an idiot. What an idiot. Dallas has Amari Cooper and Gallup, but we don't need a receiver. Are you kidding me? I don't want Justin Jefferson. He's ass. He's stupid. I fire his ass. I fire his ass. I mean, how he's got to be stupid. <laughs> 
Um, I'm going to dispute that whole thing that the Cowboys played in the worst division in football. Uh, I got to tell you, take a look at the NFC North. You had Green Bay in there, and then you had uh, Minnesota. You had the Lions, and you had the Bears. That wasn't exactly a better division than the NFC East. And I'll give you the NFC South. They only had one playoff team as well. Now, I'll give you that I think that New Orleans is pretty good, but you look at uh, Carolina and Atlanta, you can't tell me that those two divisions are better than uh, are, are better than the, the, the than our division. Just didn't. Just, just can't. We had two teams go to the playoffs. Exactly. I don't think we were that. The brother screwed us. <laughs> okay. We had time for one more play. Yeah, but he uh, ran. The rule is 10 yards, he ran for 20. That's against the rule. And they don't say nothing about that. Anyway. I'm just saying. Everybody, get your shot glasses. By Friday night's show, I will have this updated with all of the new, all the channel members and all the shot glasses and all the people that got stuff. Let me say from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate all you great people, but it's time to get those shots out. <laughs> Well, everybody, thank you very much as always, and God willing, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Keep the faith, tell somebody you love them, and I'll see you soon. The party's over. (laughs) They say that all good things must end. Call it a night. The party's over. And tomorrow and next year.